and welcome back to my channel. This is just a quick update on progress with the uh, XCI Adventure Game Engine for the Commander X16. Um, right now we uh, are in beta release 0 0.6. I know 0 0.5 came out not too long ago, but um, a couple new uh, fixes here for uh, version 0.6. If uh, we take a look here at the release notes, so I'm going to have, of course, the uh, uh, link in GitHub uh, in the description below. And you'll see that there were uh, two outstanding issues. Uh, one was uh, exit stopped working <laughs> again. And it looks like now I've got it working again with the, the current release of the emulator. And you'll get a, a basic prompt. It doesn't go back to the very beginning screen, but you get a basic prompt and you can continue from there. And uh, one that was uh, one that came about uh, during the interim since the last uh, build, uh, last release, was uh, issue number six, where I uh, rediscovered I had forgotten that I had uh, kind of swept that under the rug before, but the sprite move instruction did not support frame delays of only one jiffy. That is, uh, 60 frames per second was uh, not working. And uh, I discovered this while creating a uh, new demo for XCI because what I wanted to have was a, uh, an actual logo for the engine itself. And here it is in its most elemental form. Uh, it's uh, meant to invoke the uh, pixel art of the past and specifically the, I think my most, uh, in the game I find most inspirational, which is uh, King's Quest V, which had a, a similar uh, opening screen where you had this sort of wood panel and that very uh, cheesy 80s uh, gold letter <laughs> sort of written uh, on top of it. And uh, I, I kind of toned that down a bit and, of course, made it even blockier because we're talking about an 8-bit version of the uh, SCI uh, game engine. And... Uh, but not just SEI, it's just inspired by that and Scum. Of course, if you go back and subscribe to my channel, please, and go and uh, check out the tutorial series on uh, XCI and get into all the different ways that you can use it. And uh, so what I wanted to do is to not just create this logo, but to have a, a nice sort of uh, animation to help. Uh, you know, advertise it, show off uh, what the animation capabilities are. So uh, first I wanted to make it so it was nice and big on the screen, not just, you know, one pixel per uh, blocky pixel within the uh, actual logo itself. So I blew that up four times, which you can see here in the spreadsheet below. It's, uh, yeah, pretty big. So to do this, I wanted to split up uh, first the... Uh, foreground from the background, so this sort of wood block in the back would be one set of sprites, and then the letters would be another set of sprites that would be able to sort of move in sync and then out of sync. Um, so to do that, first I had to define some basic, uh, just these brown frames. I had to modify the palette here. This is not the standard palette. It uses... Uh, uh, a different shade of yellow and then this uh, this uh, new shade of brown and then these extra shades that are goldish if you will and so there I create another little notchy bits for the uh, the brown background and then I split up the XCI letters into this set of uh, of sprite frames because what I wanted to do was basically have this all sort of disintegrated and then fly together and then you can see the logo and so I had sort of mapped out what that uh, final state was where here's the frames the frame indices right here for the background and then positioned over that would be the uh, foreground sprites now of course I can take advantage of this by uh, the uh, behavior of XCI and of the Commander X16 is that the uh, higher indexed uh, sprites are uh, further and further into the background. So that sprite zero, which is the mouse cursor, is at the very foreground. And then you just go back, back, and back so that you have through uh, all 128 
uh, different sprites. You have 128 different layers effectively. So making sure that the uh, sprite indices for the letters are going to be at a, a lower uh, sprite index than the uh, background. Uh, even though you can see here that the frame indices are higher, the frame indices don't matter, just the actual uh, sprite indices. So I created a basic uh, level, of course, after putting all these sprites in here. And then I created a level that just sort of sets initial positions for all these sprites in the periphery of the screen. So just a lot of sprite frames and sprite commands. And then eventually, I, after I do a little uh, 60 jiffy, one second uh, wait, I, do, I start moving uh, the background pieces uh, together. And then I wait for that to finish and a little extra time. And then I have the uh, letter sprites converge. And then I start putting some tiles underneath everything once they're all converged there. So the tiles is just a matter of taking this same sort of one uh, pixel uh, version of the logo and creating some tiles for that. So you can see here I created these uh, six tiles to say XCI and then just sort of uh, roughed out another little tile map right here. So here's the XCI logo with uh, these tile uh, indices. And then I have the uh, ASCII tile indices right here. If I uh, blow this up a lot, you can see that here it would uh, ultimately read out the, uh, the actual uh, words <laughs> behind XCI, which is an extremely compact interpreter. Uh, the words kind of uh, fail me right now. But anyway, so if I go back and see here, I put these tiles uh, in the background. The tiles are always going to be underneath sprites, so I know they're going to be hidden. Once I have some uh, sprites uh, covering it up, they're not going to be seen. And in fact, you'll notice here I've added uh, four sprite frames that use the uh, palette offset of 15. Now in XCI, the palette offset 15, which is the last palette offset, these are all black so that I'm able to take sprite frame 1, which is solid brown, and instead that's going to be an opaque black. And that just sort of helps cover up uh, some of this text that's going to appear behind the, the little notches that we have in the in the logo. As we can see here, we've got these little little notches here. We didn't want the letters peeking out from behind there. So we get those in there and then rather than uh, coming from all different directions and going in all different directions, uh, uh, after the convergence then I uh, split all the sprites in half and then have them moving together in lockstep. Uh, up, uh, half of them up and half of them down to reveal the little text under there. Then do a little text animation. Uh, after that movement's done, or actually right before it ends, so you'll see that these uh, these movements are still happening when the text starts coming up. And uh, then it just has a little plug for the engine, and that's it. So, so this is uh, this is what it looks like. Of course, here I've created a, uh, a repository. If you go to my uh, GitHub, you can go ahead and download this and uh, fork it, whatever you want to do and you go ahead and uh, build it and run it and it doesn't have any intro screen no title screen just cuts uh, right to uh, the menu i do a new game and there we go the background comes in and now all these funky looking sprites come together and they're magically xei pulls apart and then reveals the smaller version of the logo so if you wanted to see that again, let me uh, zoom right into that. And, you know, you can just keep doing new game and see it over and over again to your heart's content. There you go. So uh, I'm not necessarily expecting to have this animation be part of uh, any, uh, any games necessarily, 
but it, it is something that uh, I might end up throwing as an intro to different YouTube demos uh, as I'm going along. So uh, I, I hope that was uh, of uh, some interest. I hope you go uh, to my GitHub, you check out this new beta version, uh, check out some of the uh, new stuff that I've uh, put in here. I like I've added the logo into the documentation and, and cleaned up some of the documentation a bit uh, as I'm now going into the next phase of using this engine, which is to create an actual real life game. And for that, I have a bit of a request to put out. I've already uh, done this on, on Facebook and elsewhere, but if, uh, if you or someone you know is uh, interested in 8-bit gaming, or in adventure gaming in general, and wants to help uh, me create a, a new game, well, this is your opportunity. So if you would go ahead and visit that GitHub link, and you'll go to my profile, and you'll see I have uh, this uh, email address on there, or you can follow me, or whatever, and you can just let me know that you're interested in uh, contributing to uh, the game that I'm going to create. Uh, I'll, I'll share with you what my ideas are for that game, and if you want, I'm going to gladly take any people that want to help me create some graphics or music or start programming some of these levels. Of course, you don't have to program in assembly. You can use the XCI configuration language and go through the tutorials that I've already put out there and uh, get yourself up to speed on it. So uh, if you are interested, again, please let me know uh, through uh, GitHub or you can even comment on this video. And that's it. So I, I, I hope you uh, uh, consider uh, being part of uh, the, uh, the past <laughs> coming into the future with the Commander X16 and the XCI game engine. And I, I thank you very much and I hope you are staying home and staying safe, and I will see you again very soon. Bye-bye.